Crab Central Station. Welcome Crab Crew. We are on day four of our breeding attempt and everything's going really well. We already did our morning water change. Um, we had one kind of hiccup this morning. Our holding tank was too low. The salinity was too low. And so um, before we started the water change, we mixed up some um, salt water that was like high concentration salt water, poured it in there. By the end of our water change, it was still too low. So um, anyway, so we had to kind of deal with that. We figured out what happened is somehow in our bucket that we get our salt from, we had some instant ocean in there from last year or something like that. And um, we're thinking that instant ocean doesn't dissolve well enough and doesn't quite have the same salinity content that the reef crystals mm -hmm. does. And so we ended up totally emptying our holding tank um, and throwing out that water and um, remixing new holding tank water. We just finished that up um, so that we can get our salinity back to where it needs to be because that's hard. To, it's hard to adjust, especially if it's not salty enough. It's, it seems to be easier to bring salinity down than up. So We had been using the reef crystals up until now. It's just we got our bucket that we use for our water and we added reef crystals on top to fill yeah. it full and we just used all those and so yeah. I think underneath that was actually instant ocean, regular instant ocean rather than reef crystals which yeah. we didn't realize. And both are safe. I mean you can use either but reef crystals just seem to work better and keep the salinity uh, more consistently. So um, so that was the one kind of hiccup this morning. Exciting news, we our baby brine shrimp some have um, hatched and so we were able to feed live artemia this morning which um, yay! I'm sure the babies were excited about that. They did get the copepods last night um, and yesterday afternoon as well. We saw those in our water changes so um, that was exciting. Um, yeah, numbers look good. We haven't seen very many deaths. We didn't see sheds this morning in our water change so I think yesterday was shed day. The water looked very different today than it did yesterday. So we'll kind of see what happens tonight. Um, that could, could kind of be telling as well. But um, yeah, so now um, we just did our lunchtime feeding and now we're gonna try to get some work done. All right guys, so we are closing out day number four, which seems kind of hard to believe. I really feel like this first couple are like a huge whirlwind. They take a lot of time just to get everything settled, get into a routine. Um, but I feel like by day four, you're kind of like, okay, or maybe day three even like, okay, we got this, we can do this. Um, we kind of have a good rhythm down now with the water changes. We figured out some really cool stuff um, yesterday with how to drive the Zoe from different part, two different parts of the Chrysal so that it's easier for me to clean without sucking up so many babies, right? Because that's the thing, like we, we put the wastewater in this jar and the more babies that I suck up while siphoning the, chrys the chrysal, the longer it takes us to, si you know. And the more debris you get back in the chrysal with each pipette. Yes, so, you know, each pipette we're one baby at a time back. So the less babies you can suck up while siphoning your wastewater, then, you know, your water changes go a lot faster. So that is super exciting that purple pinchers go to a light and that we have figured out some ways to manipulate that whole system to help out. Our chrysals are looking really good. Um, we think we have, you know, maybe a thousand to 1500 Zoe. Um, that's just a guesstimate. We really don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, our live artemia is hatched. So we've been feeding that today. We um, give them some copods, copepods as well. Um, anyway, we kind of cut down on the feeding because, it, it, as you know, like from yesterday and day before, we were feeding too much. And now we're kind of thinking maybe we're not feeding quite enough. So, <laughs> third time's a charm. We're going to figure this out and get it just right by tomorrow, I think. But um, anyway, they look good. They're swimming. They're, you know, we definitely had a shed day yesterday. We had some more sheds tonight, but not nearly as many. Um, and so those kind of last ones are kind of catching up with those first ones which is pretty normal so um so that's exciting so we're in stage two for sure um i would say and heading into day five when their gut tracks are supposed to be complete and so the pooping starts tomorrow oh boy <laughs> um everything we've done so far might totally go 
down the drain tomorrow when the pooping starts, but you know, we'll have to take that one day at a time and figure it out. Um, we did work on the um, blog. So I've typed up everything. Um, Brooke and I have typed up everything that we've done so far. And if you enjoy reading, then please head over to our website, www.craftcentralstation.com and go to CCS Journey to Land. And this is Journey to Land number three. So if you click on there, you can read all about what we're doing, some of the observations that we're making, um, just what we're documenting along the way to kind of help future breeders and ourselves remember and that sort of thing. So I did that today. Um, also, we, um, I spent some time going back reading over what we did last year, reading over uh, Mary Ager's blog from her attempt because we do have purple pinchers, so that's a really good guide day by day. Um, so just to freshen my mind, I went over that. And um, yeah, so really it was kind of relaxing day. It rained here all day, so we just kind of stayed inside. and. We didn't do anything really for the 4th of July. No, I mean, it was pouring rain. Yeah. So. Anyway, yeah, so that's pretty much the day. Not a whole lot of new things to report. So this is going to be a shorter vlog or it'll be with the other day. Yeah. So we'll see. There's just really not much. And we don't want to film a whole ton of the same stuff every day. Yeah. So, you know, if it's just a little video update, then that's what it's going to be. Yep. Um, but leave your co questions in the comments below because we want to do a Q&A episode yeah. about the breeding. So, you know, say question for the vlog or something like that if you yeah. want it to be featured in. We are trying to get more video of these. Zoe, but the thing is in the chrysal it's kind of like a greenish tint because of all the native chloropsis and um, the blue like, and yeah just jugs. the blue of the jug itself it's really difficult to get um for the camera to know what to focus on so you've got all these zoe swimming around you have debris and food you know floating around you have the bubblers going and so the camera is like doesn't know what to focus on so we're working on that hopefully we can get some good footage for you guys but Good morning, Crab Crew. This is Crab Central Station. My name is Darcy, and we are on day six of raising Purple Pincher Zoe. We didn't really film a whole lot yesterday. It was kind of a routine day. We didn't really run into anything necessarily interesting. Um, so, so yeah, it was just kind of an old day. Um, today, same kind of thing. We're just going through the motions, doing our steps. And so we look really good. Um, definitely getting bigger. They're easier to um, actually record on our phones, on our cameras. So we're going to try and get some better footage for you guys. Uh, they're definitely eating more. So we told you guys a couple days ago that we were going to start to feed more. And we have been and they're still eating it all. So that is really promising. Um, we haven't had a whole lot of debris in our jars for water changes and super exciting. Okay, we were telling y'all um, that we were rearranging the um, crab room so that we could... That was yesterday, so I don't know. It might not make it in the video. But I guess we could um, put it in this video. Okay. So yesterday, we started to kind of rearrange the tables and the supplies and everything in our crab room to see if we could get two complete stations of water changing stations going so that we could cut down on um, water changes even more. And we tried it last night for the first time and it didn't really go very well because we needed another um, pouring jug and anyway, you know, the first time you try something, there's like always something that doesn't quite work out, but we adjusted and we tried it again this morning and it went really well. We did complete water change both chrysoles in 25 minutes. That's like siphoning and changing the water, um, the wastewater. So, I think it was 30 minutes including siphoning. Okay, 30 minutes including the si siphoning. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was like, holy cow, we could do that. That's game changer right there. Um, so very, very excited about that. Um, of course, you have to have more than one person doing a lot of change for that to work. Um, but luckily, at this point, anyways, we do. So, um, I don't know what else. Oh, finally, look, y'all. Finally, our light came. Still no, 
frying shrimp <laughs> eggs. Good thing we went to Austin and got those, y'all, because they are still not here. Did you even imagine? I'd be so sad. Anyway, we have this grow light we've been using, and it's working fine. You know, we did have that one little hiccup where it was kind of evaporating, maybe the water too fast on one of the sides, and so it's this huge box for this. <laughs> That sounds like a waste. That's such a waste. Oh my gosh. Why can't they just ship that? I know, right? So we've been using the grow light and it's actually working really well. We think maybe it's helping the nanopleuropsis to kind of um, cultivate. Cultivate? Anywho. So our light came in. We originally bought this to go across the chrysal. We use these in, um, we use these in all of our tanks. These are the Aquanit, LED Aquanit, and we'll put a link down below for you guys. We have a link in most of our videos, I believe, to this, but, um, but yeah, so we bought this to put over the Chrysler, but actually the grow light's working so well, we don't really want to change anything right now, and so we're going to use this on the transition tank instead, which we started talking about today, so that's exciting. Yep, there are a few things we have to do. Yep, we I bought mean, the bridge. Now we have a light. Mm -hmm. That's it. Any updates on the babies or any, you want to talk about the ease? Did we think of anything else about the ease that we were talking about this morning? Or was it basically the stuff we said in the last, the other Yeah, block? a lot of you are giving us your ideas on what's going on, the difference between the ease and the purple pinchers that they're, you know, kind of differences. So that's really fun. Thanks for sharing, you guys. That's what's great about having a community and like running science out of your home is that we can all come together and talk about these and have different ideas and thoughts. And when we share them, we all learn and grow. So thank you for um, for sharing. So yeah, we've started to just research Ecuador um, and the salinity in the ocean, kind of the tides, um, what they potentially be eating. Um, We're wondering if they're more bottom dwellers than the purple pinchers or something. Yeah, which would change what they eat, right? Because purple pinchers, what they're eating also is attracted to the light. And so it makes sense that they also come to the light to eat. But Ecuadorians don't do that. And so maybe they don't eat the same things. So, yeah. Anyway, oh, that? so I don't know if we said this. We have it on our blog, but so last year we did the Ecuadorian babies. We did two rounds, and both times we were completely out of Zoe by day 11. With, yeah, things started to turn for us on day 7. Which is which tomorrow is for tomorrow, this. So we're a little nervous. Yeah, but by day 11 we had zero left. Like yeah. literally zero. They disappeared. Like Not we didn't, the there weren't any even dead ones floating around. Right. Um, right. We they were, it, they were just gone. Yeah, which we assume they eat each other. Um, but yeah, day 11 on both attempts, which tells us that something happens day 11, which Mary also documented a lot of loss in her purple pinchers on day 11. Um, but we'll see. It's scary. Day 11's in four days. Well, five days, but this day's almost over, so I said four. Yeah, so we're trying to brainstorm some ideas. My thought is that they're transitioning you know, into stage four, um, and maybe, you know, that's just a difficult stage. So, I don't know. I don't know what we can do to maybe help. We were thinking about omega fats, but I think, you know, the cop copepods that we're feeding are high in omega fats. And so are the artemia. And so are the artemia, so. As far as Google tells us anyway, <laughs> it could be wrong. So yeah, because um, we're thinking, you know, high omega fats will help them to shed easy, easily. Um, but, I don't know. Anyway, we'll keep you updated. Yeah. We're scared for day seven, which is when the yeah. losses start. Yeah. So we're going to do a really big change, water change tomorrow, just to keep on top of things and prepare, I guess. Yeah. Um, hopefully that helps. but. We need to order some more shells. Oh man, we need little shells, yeah. And then we need to start getting the transition tank ready because we yeah. have like 10 days. If you think the hard part is raising the Zoe, which it is. Uh, it's more controllable though. Equally difficult is finding small enough shells so that once they become megaloba, they actually have a shell to 
select and come to land yeah. with. But it's hard to know what shells to buy. How do you know they're small enough online? Yeah. So we okay. have some already, but we need little, little ones more. Yes. We don't have enough. Yes. So. Yeah. Yep. So we need to start looking into that. Um, and we need to start working on the transition tank. I think we need to order a heat. We have the tank. We have the substrate. Now we have the light. We have the bridge in the pool. Um, and so what we shells. We need shells and a heater and a lid. Yep. For the transition tank. All right. We finished day six. Yeah. Um, tonight's water changes took a little bit longer because I think we're heading into the second set of sheds, which would be transitioning into stage three. So that's really what it looked like in the water tonight. Um, more sheds in Chrysal 1, which is where the Zoe are that were spawned correctly into the salt water. Um, and a lot fewer sheds in Chrysal 2, which is where the um, egg, where the eggs were spawned on the sand and we rescued them and hatched them in a jar. So I think there's definitely like a half a day difference in development. Which of the makes two. sense because they were hatched later. Yep, which makes sense. So uh, we should have lots of sheds in the morning. Uh, um, we felt like the babies were more lethargic today or something. So, you know, we talked about changing our setup just a little bit so that we could have two stations changing water. Well, that meant that the location of our light changed which we thought would be even better because now it's centered on the tank. Remember before we were having that issue because the light was closer to the Chrysal 1, which was causing the, that Chrysal to evaporate a little bit more quickly. And so the salinity was a little bit higher in that one. Well, now it's centered. So which now the salinity in both Chrysals are consistent. However, we found out at the um, water change tonight that both Chrysals and the holding tank were all a little bit higher salinity. Not a ton, like between 36 and 37 um, PPT. So that's not bad, but um, the other thing that we noticed is that the temperature in the Chrysal was at 85. And um, it, had been, it has been closer to 83. So with the increase in the temperature, we think the Zoe were a little bit more lethargic, but it also could be shedding. Like it could be them just like... Well, technically 85 so. should be okay yeah. because, you know, 86 has been done and it, it's not that big of a difference. Yeah. Um, but they just seemed lethargic. They didn't move to the light as much and they weren't bouncing around as much, yeah. which is kind of worrying. Like, are they dying? Is are right. doing something wrong? Are they hungry? Are they, you know, yeah. it's just scary when they don't act like they have been. Yes, definitely. I did siphon out some, um, dead Zoe today. Not a ton, I would say maybe five, which I know is not like a lot, but you also don't clear out the entire Chrysal, so there's probably some other ones in there. I don't see them, but um, anyway, so we did lose a few today, which is pretty normal. normal. You're going to lose some. Yeah. Um, just a reminder, guys, you can do everything right, and there will still be a, a high death rate just because the sheds are very complicated, and a lot can go wrong, and so even if you're the perfect at doing this, the, they still have stuff on their end they have to do properly. Um, yeah. They have to shed properly, and if not, they die, they can get stuck or whatever, so. Yeah, but we're on top of our water changes. The chrysals look really clean. The water quality, I think, is good, so. We're doing um, our best? Yeah, we're doing our best. I'm, I'm, I think I'm just like nervous too because day seven was rough for us last year. Mm -hmm. Day seven and 11. Actually, we didn't make it past day 11, so yeah. there could be more rough days, but. Seven was when it really turn, took a turn for the worst. Yeah, and, and then we were exponentially losing them for yeah. the next four days. And so then when we kind of have a lot of behavior changes in the change tonight, then it's just uh, a little bit worrisome. Yeah. So, I don't know. But we're excited because CrabCon is this week, so we at least have something fun <laughs> happening. Well, not that this isn't fun, but it's just a little bit worrying and taxing. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty much it. So we backed up the light. We're moving the light further away. Um, I put some cooler water, you know, in the Chrysal for the water change to try and bring that down a little bit lowered the heaters on the holding tank and the Chrysal, so hopefully temperatures will be good. 
um, going forward. And so, yeah, I mean, we just got to hope they do well during the night and see what happens in the morning. All right, thanks for All watching. Right guys, subscribe to our channel, click the bell to be notified when we drop new content. Uh, follow us on social media. So we make lots of announcements on there all the time. And exclusive Zoe footage on there. Yeah. So, um, and comment down below any questions that you have. We'll be happy to answer them in the following vlog. Um, and yeah, just thumbs up and share what we're doing. And we appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for coming along this journey with us. Uh, we love your comments and it encourages us along the way. And we really, really appreciate that. So thank you all so much. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.